Cebu Pacific Flight 387. The aircraft utilized for the Cebu Pacific Flight 387 was a McDonnell Douglas DC-932, bearing the registration RPC-1507. Originally manufactured in 1967, it served with Air Canada before being purchased by Cebu Pacific in March of 1997. On the day of the crash, it was flying a domestic route from Manila's Ninoy Aquino International Airport. It stopped briefly in Tacloban to drop off a spare tire for another plane, then continued its journey to Lumbia Airport in Cagayan de Oro. There were five crew members and 99 passengers on board, including children and some international travelers. One of them was an American surgeon traveling for a medical mission. The pilots were flying visually instead of relying on instruments. The last time air traffic control spoke to the plane, it was about 42 miles away from Cagayan de Oro and starting its descent. No problems were reported, but at around 11 in the morning, the plane crashed into Mount Sumagaya in Claveria, roughly 28 miles from its destination. Sadly, all 104 people on board died instantly. This type of crash is called controlled flight into terrain, when a working aircraft is flown into the ground due to navigation or pilot error. Investigations into the crash were never fully conclusive. It's believed that even though the weather at the airport was clear, the mountains nearby were covered in fog. Some experts say the plane may have been caught in a downdraft while descending, which forced it lower. Another serious issue was that the official navigation charts showed the mountain as being only 5,000 feet high, while its real peak was closer to 6,000 feet. This could have misled the pilots. There were also questions raised about the adequacy of their training. Since no clear final report was released, people still debate what exactly went wrong, though most agree that outdated charts, possible pilot error, and poor visual flight procedures all played a role. Value Jet Flight 592 Value Jet Flight 592 was a McDonnell Douglas DC-9 plane around 27 years old. On May 11, 1996, it was supposed to be a simple flight from Miami to Atlanta. Value Jet was a budget airline known for using older, second-hand planes and depending a lot on outside companies for plane maintenance, a choice that would later raise a lot of questions. About 10 minutes after takeoff, a fire broke out in the front cargo area. The fire started because chemical oxygen generators used to provide oxygen in emergencies had been loaded onto the plane without safety caps. They were also wrongly labeled as empty and packed next to spare tires. One of the generators probably got bumped, switched on, and started releasing hot oxygen. This created the perfect condition for a fire to spread quickly. A loud bang was picked up by cockpit instruments, which came from one of the tires in the cargo area exploding due to the heat. Passengers started noticing smoke and fire inside the cabin. The pilots declared an emergency and tried to turn back to Miami. Sadly, they didn't make it. Witnesses on the ground saw the plane suddenly tilt, roll, and then dive straight down into the Florida Everglades. The crash killed all 110 people on board. After a 15-month investigation, the NTSB found several serious problems. Sabertech, the maintenance company hired by ValueJet, had packed the dangerous cargo the wrong way. ValueJet didn't properly check their work, and the FAA had failed to enforce safety upgrades like smoke detectors and fire suppression in cargo areas even after past warnings going back to 1988. In the end, the fire destroyed important wires and control systems, making it impossible for the pilots to fly the plane. Investigators also believed the smoke or heat may have knocked out the crew in the last moments. Sosoliso Airlines Flight 1145 Sosoliso Airlines Flight 1145 was a McDonnell Douglas DC-9 plane, built in 1972 and bought by the airline in 2003. On December 10, 2005, it was doing a regular flight within Nigeria, flying from Abuja to Port Harcourt. There were 103 passengers on board. Many of them were school kids heading home for the holidays, along with seven crew members. As the plane approached Port Harcourt, the weather started to get worse. The pilots were supposed to stop their descent if they couldn't see the runway at 307 feet, but they kept going even though visibility was poor. By the time they tried to pull up at about 200 feet, it was already too low for a safe recovery. The plane ended up hitting a grassy area between the runway and the taxiway. The tail smashed into a concrete drainage ditch, and the aircraft broke apart and caught fire. It slid for over 1,000 feet before finally stopping. Seven people were pulled out alive, but only two survived. One of them was Kechi Okuchi, a student who later became known for her recovery and strength. The other, Bunmi Amusan, who survived with 40% burns on her body. The investigation found that the crash happened because the pilots kept descending without being able to see the runway, and they waited too long to try to pull up. Including that, there were lots of other issues. 
The crew hadn't been properly trained to handle sudden wind changes. There were no approach lights to help guide the landing, and that concrete ditch shouldn't have been there in the first place. Aero Mexico Flight 498 Aero Mexico Flight 498 was a McDonnell Douglas DC-9 plane, built in 1969 and given to the airline in 1979. On August 31, 1986, it was on a regular flight from Mexico City to Los Angeles, with stops in Guadalajara, Loreto, and Tijuana. Everything was normal, and the plane had 58 passengers and 6 crew members on board as it headed to its final stop at LAX. But while it was getting ready to land in Los Angeles, the unexpected happened. The DC-9 suddenly collided in mid-air with a small private plane, a Piper Archer, flown by a man named William Kramer. He had two passengers with him. The Piper hit the top left part of the DC-9's tail, ripping off the stabilizers. With that kind of damage, the big jet couldn't stay stable. It flipped upside down and crashed straight into a neighborhood in Caritos. The crash caused a massive explosion. The jet hit a backyard, set homes on fire, and scattered wreckage across the area. All 64 people on the DC-9 all three in the Piper, and 15 people on the ground died. Eight others on the ground were badly hurt. When the NTSB investigated, they found that the small Piper plane had flown into restricted airspace near the airport without permission, and it didn't have a device called a Mode C transponder, which would have told air traffic control its altitude. Because of that, it didn't show up properly on the radar. The FAA came under fire for not doing enough to monitor private planes in busy skies, and for relying too much on pilots seeing and avoiding each other in the air. The DC-9 crew hadn't done anything wrong. Itavia Flight 870 Itavia Flight 870 was flying a Douglas DC-9 that had been around since 1966 and had nearly 30,000 hours in the air by 1980. On June 27th, it took off from Bologna, headed to Palermo with 77 passengers and 4 crew. Everything seemed fine at first. But then, while flying over the Tyrrhenian Sea, near an island called Usatika, the plane suddenly disappeared from the radar. Later, wreckage was found spread out all over the sea, showing the plane had broken apart at about 25,000 feet. Sadly, no one survived. The way the debris was scattered suggested something violent had happened, like an explosion, not just the plane falling apart. Early investigations couldn't agree on what caused it. Some thought maybe there was a bomb on board, possibly in the bathroom. Then in 1999, an Italian judge said it was more likely the plane got hit by a missile during a secret military fight between NATO and Libyan jets. Even more surprisingly, some former Italian prime ministers said the missile might have been French, meant for Libyan leader Gaddafi's plane, but accidentally hit this flight instead. The whole case got messy, radar records went missing, the black boxes were damaged, and people talked about cover-ups. No one was ever convicted, but courts did say the victims' families deserved compensation agreeing that a missile was probably behind the crash. Still, the full story remains one of Italy's biggest aviation mysteries. Alitalia Flight 4128 Alitalia Flight 4128 was a short domestic flight from Rome to Palermo, flying just before Christmas on December 23, 1978. The aircraft was a McDonnell Douglas DC-9 built in 1968 and named Isola di Stromboli. That evening, it was carrying 129 people, 124 passengers and 5 crew on what was supposed to be a simple holiday charter trip. But things went terribly wrong during the landing. As the plane approached Palermo Airport at night, the pilots began descending too early. They thought they were close to the runway, so they leveled the aircraft off at just 150 feet above the water, while they were still nearly two miles away from the airport. At that low altitude and speed, about 170 miles per hour, the right wing of the plane touched the sea. The impact caused the aircraft to break apart and sink into the Tyrrhenian Sea, about 1.9 miles north of Palermo. The entire crash happened just 9 seconds after the pilots leveled the plane. Out of 129 people on board, only 21 passengers survived, rescued by nearby fishing boats. The other 108 people tragically lost their lives. Investigators found that the crash was caused by what's known as a controlled flight into water. The pilots misjudged their distance from the airport and started using visual cues too early instead of relying on their instruments. At night, especially over water, it's very easy to get fooled by the reflections of airport lights on the sea or clouds, a visual trick called the black hole illusion. On top of that, communication between the pilots wasn't great. The plane had known issues with its altimeter system, and the runway didn't have an instrument landing system to guide the descent. Southern Airways Flight 932 Southern Airways Flight 932 was a chartered flight on November 14, 1970, meant to bring the Marshall University football team, their coaches, supporters, and flight crew home after a game in North Carolina. The aircraft was a Douglas DC-9, 
and the trip was supposed to be a simple one-leg return flight to Huntington, West Virginia. As the plane neared Huntington's Tri-State Airport, the weather was awful. There was rain, fog, low clouds, and it was dark. The pilots began their final descent, but dropped below the minimum safe altitude of 1,240 feet, even though they couldn't see the runway yet, which was a serious mistake in those conditions. Tragically, the aircraft struck trees on a hillside less than a mile away from the runway. Data from the cockpit suggested that the pilots may have tried to climb at the last second, but it was too late. The plane rolled and dove into a ravine, bursting into flames on impact. All 75 people on board were killed, including nearly the entire Marshall University football team. It was one of the worst sports-related air disasters in U.S. history. Investigators from the NTSB concluded that the crash was caused by what's known as a controlled flight into terrain, meaning the plane was under control, but the pilots flew it straight into the ground. The descent below minimum altitude without seeing the runway was the direct cause, but why that happened isn't fully known. There were two main possibilities. Either the pilots misread their instruments, or the altimeter gave them the wrong reading, possibly due to moisture getting into the system. The investigation also pointed out several other issues, like poor communication between the pilots, the airport didn't have a proper instrument landing system, and confusing lights from a nearby refinery may have misled them visually in the dark. Allegheny Airlines Flight 853 Allegheny Airlines Flight 853 was a regular passenger flight on September 9, 1969. It was a McDonnell Douglas DC-9 flying a multi-stop route from Boston to St. Louis with several layovers in between. On the leg toward Indianapolis, the crew was flying under instrument flight rules, which means they were relying on air traffic control and instruments to guide them through the airspace, especially in cloudy or low visibility conditions. As the plane descended toward Indianapolis, it was cleared to fly at 2,500 feet. At the same time, a small private plane, a Piper Cherokee, was flying nearby under visual flight rules. That means the pilot was relying on looking outside the window instead of using radar guidance. Unfortunately, this smaller plane didn't have a transponder, so it didn't show up clearly on radar. The two aircraft unknowingly ended up in the same airspace. The DC-9's tail struck the cockpit of the Piper at an angle, slicing it apart. The impact tore the tail off the DC-9, sending it into a deadly spin. It crashed at nearly 400 miles per hour into a soybean field in Shelby County, Indiana. Both planes were destroyed. Everyone on board, 82 people in the DC-9 and one in the Piper, was killed. When the NTSB investigated the crash, they didn't blame the pilots. Instead, they pointed problems in the system itself. The air traffic control setup at the time didn't properly separate aircraft flying under different rules, and it relied too much on pilots seeing each other in the air, which doesn't always work, especially when one plane isn't visible on radar. Delta Airlines Flight 723 Delta Airlines Flight 723 was a short domestic flight on July 31, 1973, using a McDonnell Douglas DC-9. It had taken off from Burlington, Vermont, made a stop in Manchester, and was heading toward its final destination, Boston Logan Airport. On board were 89 people, including passengers, crew, and a cockpit observer. As the plane approached Boston, the weather was really bad. Dense fog and low clouds made visibility poor. The pilots were using an instrument landing system, which helps guide the aircraft safely to the runway when they can't see it. But something went wrong. The plane came in too fast and too high, and instead of correcting properly, it dropped below the safe path it was supposed to follow. About half a mile before the runway, the DC-9 slammed into a concrete seawall. The impact tore apart parts of the plane and the landing gear. It skidded across the ground, broke into pieces, and burst into flames. Out of everyone on board, two people were pulled out alive. But only one, a 20-year-old U.S. Air Force sergeant, survived for a while. Sadly, he passed away a few months later from his injuries. This crash became the deadliest in Logan Airport's history. The NTSB investigated and found that the crash wasn't due to any mechanical issue. It was all human error. The pilots didn't slow down enough or descend properly. They didn't keep track of their instruments closely and followed the flight director incorrectly, which led them to go below the safe minimum height before they could see the runway. On top of that, Air traffic control was overloaded and gave them their final landing clearance a bit too late, which likely added more stress in the cockpit. 